I'm Cape Jewel, and this is Comic Smack, your weekly, daily, all the time, anytime comic show where I give you your fix of everything you need to know from the world of comic books and superheroes. And on today's show, we are taking a closer look at Spider Man 2, issue number 3. Who is the mysterious alternate world Miles Morales, and why is he so different from the web slinger that we know? Well, let's hop on in together and find out, shall we? Alrighty then, so this is an issue that threw me for a loop. First off, this story that up until now has been about Spider Man actually opens with a flashback to Wilson Fisk. Of course, this was back in the days before he earned the name Kingpin when he was still just muscle for Don Rigoletto. And hey, even though he doesn't have a fancy white suit or an office atop the Empire State Building, Old Willie still has a lot of enemies on the inside and ends up getting thrown into the hole for biting another inmate's nose off. What exactly is he doing in Strikers Island and what does any of this have to do with Spider-Man? Well, as we discover, Fisk got himself locked up on purpose so he could have an audience with Miles Morales. It seems that the other Miles had gone to jail instead of his cousin, which was considered a great favor to the Rigatello family. It's because of that Wilson was sent into protect Miles and tells him that in a couple weeks they'll be let out because they're putting a bunch of pressure on the prosecutor. Miles and Wilson end up forming a very unlikely, very Shawshank redemption Ian friendship. You see, Miles was actually paid a bunch of money to kill Fisk after he got out of solitary confinement, but opted not to do it. And when the same noseless inmate gets all hopped up on MGH and tries to kill Fisk in the shower, it's Miles who ends up coming to his rescue. This moment in time would bond the two men together forever, so much of the fact that when they got out of prison, they became business partners buying a fancy restaurant together. Other Miles ends up meeting a nice woman by the name of Barbara, a woman who was actually able to look past his horrible disfiguring scars that he got defending Wilson. In fact, as we soon see, Miles was so loyal to his friend Wilson, he even assisted him in overthrowing Don Rigatello when the time was right, even though this completely clashes with every other telling of the story of Wilson Fist turning on his old boss but hey, it's just another day at the office for Bendis not respecting other people's continuity. Now, you might be asking yourself if Miles was so instrumental in helping Wilson Fisk rise to the rank of kingpin of crime in New York City, why have we never seen him up until now? Well, Miles also loved this Barbara woman so much and wanted nothing more than to go live a quiet life with her, and because Wilson owed so much to other Miles, he said that he would allow him to do so and still pay him on the side as if he was still his business partner. Man, that, uh, uh, that's pretty damn nice of him, isn't it? And if you can believe it or not, that's actually the end of the comic right there. So, that was Spider-Man 2 issue number 3, everybody. And honestly, if I had to sum this issue up in as few words as possible, it would be something like, uh, oh, I don't know. What the hell was that? It's like Bendis saw the Punisher Kingpin episode of Daredevil Season 2 and was like, oh, you know what, I'd really love to write that. Only, it's not as good as that, and despite the year's worth of build-up to finally find out the secret origin of other Miles Morales, I left the story kind of feeling like, really? That was it? Heck, the story's barely even about him, really. We see other Miles through the eyes of Wilson Fisk and follow his rise to power, which, unfortunately, gets kind of undercut in Bendis' retcon, saying the only reason Wilson Fisk was able to make all of this happen was because he had other Miles by his side. If I had to struggle and try and find something of note that might possibly be positive, um, I guess other Miles' origin story shares a lot lot of similarities to Miles' father and uncle from the Ultimate Universe who also assisted the Kingpin in Rise to Power. But I mean, that's really it, and even then, I'm really digging. I suppose if you really enjoyed how Bendis wrote Wilson Fisk back during his Daredevil days, you might be kinda sorta reminded of it here. But beyond that, there's very, very little for me to recommend about this issue. A 5 out of 10. This, this series is not going so well, is it? But alas, that was Spider-Man 2 issue number 3, everybody. I hope you enjoyed my video, and if you did, why not check out some of the other videos I have on offer. And if you want to be on the know about what's coming out next, follow me on social media, at Cape Joel. And then, if you're feeling in a supportive mood, you might want to become a patron. For as little as a dollar a month, patrons can get exclusive access to videos and content before anybody else. So until next time, everyone, this has been Cape Joel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all again later. Bye-bye.